Good morning, guys. It's Miss Philly. What's up? <laughs> okay, so we went uh, to the opening of the thrift store, which we do every single day because that's our job. That's how we make a living. That's how we make our money. Okay, so uh, we went there. It was like reseller central. Everybody was there. Not everybody, but there's a lot of resellers there. And of course, a King Cobra was there. And uh, <laughs> we, we stood outside for 10 minutes in minus 30 degree weather. Was it worth it? No, because I found nothing. Daniel found one thing. But since King Cobra left, he probably went to Sally. So I'm going to go to uh, the GC Valley Village and Salvation Army. I left Daniel there. He's going to camp there because all the comps seem to have left. So he'll be able to monopolize that area while nobody's there until people start showing up. So uh, I'm going to this Valley Village, this is about 20 minutes away, and I'm hoping that we find something because although there's this one Asian with a beanie and glasses that goes there, so he might, if he was the only one there this morning, he monopolized that area. He must have gotten some good stuff. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go just take a gander and see what we find. I got Starbucks this morning, a pike. I've been doing pikes lately because... They, they, you can drink it while you're fasting. I'm going to tell you guys, I stopped eating last night at 7 p.m. By 8 p.m. I was hungry and I was thinking about eating. I walked to the fridge a few times wanting to eat. It's not getting easier even after like weeks on end of fasting for the same amount of time. I don't know. Maybe it's different because when I was fasting and on keto, you're more satiated with all the meat and fat that you're eating. But when you're fasting and vegetarian, or at least mostly vegetarian, then you just feel healthier, but not as satiated. Maybe I just need to eat a lot more protein, like beans and legumes and stuff like that. Because last night I had a vegetarian sushi. So my sushi had cream cheese, like I had two rolls, one, was a blue eyes roll, one was a cucumber roll. So the blue eyes had avocado and cream cheese and cucumber and the avocado, uh, and then the cucumber just had cucumber. So. so we had that. And then I had some, uh, what do you call it? I had some P.F. Chang's beef and broccoli, but instead of the beef, I had tofu. And then I had some fried rice with uh, egg and tofu hot dogs in it. I did have a little bit of meat yesterday because I did have some leftover uh, nilaga, which is beef with potatoes and bok choy and onion and then with rice. And I think, oh, and I had some cheese like, to snack on. So, <laughs> I, yeah, that's what I ate yesterday. Oh, and I also had, like, before I, that's what I ate at home. But before that, I had a Whopper, Impossible Burger Whopper and some onion rings and fries. So, that was my entire meal yesterday that I ate all day. It kind of sucks because when you're eating, like, vegetarian burgers, they're not that much healthier than regular burgers they're still like in the 500 to 600 caloric range and of course the fries don't help at all <laughs> or onion rings but it sucks that you can't get like a salad on the side or something and you have to pay extra you know oh we're back in our hood we're back where we used to live <clears throat> Finally, next week, it's going to tone down in terms of, like, coldness. It's going to be, like, minus 6 rather than minus 25. <laughs> the wind chill is the killer. The wind chill is what makes you cold AF. So if your weather is minus 25 and then there's wind blowing, it literally feels like minus 35 or minus 40. Oh crap, I'm not supposed to turn down here. 
see I'm lost. I'll tell you nowhere to go anyway. <laughs> Where do we go from here? I don't know, this morning I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. The painters are coming to uh, paint my apartment because that leakage that I showed you guys in a video, it, uh, it stained the ceiling in my laundry room and in my bathroom. So they're coming to paint it. But like, I need to discuss with them, like, what about the water that was in the walls? Is it going to get mold? Like, isn't just painting over it, just covering up the problem when the problem is deep rooted in the walls? <clears throat> and you also need to change a light bulb because one of our one of my light fixtures is like the old, not the old kind, but the kind where like you have to unscrew it to get to it. So they need to fix, they need to put a new light bulb in. And I can't believe I've been in my apartment for four years. Four years just went by like that, guys. I can't, that's so long. Four years is a long time. I moved into my apartment building in 2020, May of 2020. I used to live down here too. Aww. I lived down here from 97 to like 99, I think. Oh, that was when I was a teen. I lived here when I got my license. <laughs> I remember when I got my license, two months after I got my license, I was going down a bridge and I was listening to, well, on the radio, it was too close. So I don't know if you guys remember that song by Next, uh, by Next called Too Close. Baby, I'm riding. I get so excited. Know how I like it. I try, but I can't find it. That song. Anyway, I was I was bumping to it, and I think something like slid off my chair, like the passengers, and I tried to go pick it up. And I was going down the bridge. I picked it up. I look up. I ram into someone. They ram into someone, and then they ram into someone. It was like a four car pile up because of me and I, I think I was 16 years old when that happened um anyway I remember it because I, I came back home there and I remember my mom was sleeping and I was like mom I got in an accident and like her first her first thing was like is the car okay <laughs> I was like yes well it's dented but anyway I remember though when I was uh, when that happened the lady in front of me was pregnant and she was like I don't know what it's, she was like going into labor or something and then so uh, we were wa waiting for the ambulance and the paramedics and shit and I remember the guy like some guy stopped on the road and he's like oh teenagers shouldn't be driving he's like direct traffic over there like he was mean to me I was like oh, okay and then finally like I waited and then everyone got everyone's information and then um when I was about to leave the man was like hey I'm sorry that I was like mean to you it's just you know uh, the heat of the moment I'm like whatever <laughs> old fart <laughs> this was like 1998 so I miss those days I miss being a teen in the late 90s I wish I appreciated it more while I was living at the moment you <laughs> know living the moment because time just goes by and then all you have are your memories and when you reminisce you kind of you know you kind of get nostalgic and just appreciating the moment of living that era because I feel like nowadays there aren't really that many like it's anything past 2007 like the eras just blend in together there's not a specific era like in terms of um like 80s that was an era 90s that was an era uh 2000s that was an era but then anything past like 2007 or five, it just seems like it doesn't have a specific style or like culture the way 80s, 90s and 2000s did. 2010s, eh, what, what really happened in the 2010s? <laughs> 2020s, what has happened in 2020? Nothing significant, like the styles of the 80s, 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, they all had a specific style. They all had like pop culture moments, historic moments. I don't know. Yeah, it looks busy as hell. Oh, 
I'll be honest, I'm kind of getting a little tired of thrifting. I'm getting a little bit of a, whatchamacallit? I don't know what you call it. A little, I can't fit in here. A little bit of repetitiveness. <laughs> Let's go inside. I need to go pick up Daniel. I didn't find anything. I didn't find anything. Sometimes I like to just drive and not listen to music. Sometimes I feel like music just complicates my life when I'm driving. Gots to be in the mood. Gots to buy. And sometimes I'll just talk to myself. Sometimes I'll sing to myself. You know what song I'm obsessed with right now that I can't get out of my head? Um. <laughs> come to me, come to me, burn to me, then I'll break these chains of love. Baby, come to me, come to me, come to me, baby, we'll break these chains of love. Oh, no, no. I'm hungry, but I don't want to eat. I can technically eat right now because I've been fasting for 16 hours. Oh. I feel like my life just revolves around what time I'm eating, what food I'm eating, when to stop eating. <laughs> That's literally my life. I was watching a retrospective interview with uh, Vivica E. Fox on Entertainment Tonight where she goes through all of her films. I love her so much. She's such a good actress. I wish she gets nominated for an Academy Award one day because she deserves it. She's been in the game for like 30 years or more. She's been like, there's so many films that she's done that I love. Of course, probably the number one film that she's done and one of my top, I would say top 10 favorite films would be Set It Off. 1996, I was in grade 10, I believe, maybe grade nine. And the soundtrack came off, blew up the charts because Set It Off soundtrack was a dub bomb.com. Of course, the big song from that album was On Vogue's Don't Let Go. Only hitting number two on the charts, bullshit. Should have been number one. Uh, but yeah. The movie was Amazeballs for black, powerful women robbing a bank. Hello. Who doesn't want a movie like that? And me being like, when was that? 96. I would have been 14. Um, I just remember watching it. I didn't watch it in theaters because, you know, it was rated R. Could not sneak into the theater. <laughs> I remember trying to sneak into freaking The Specialist in 94. And that was, that movie, there was like sex scenes in that movie with Sharon Stone and Sylvester Stallone. And me and my friend, we went to the mall to go watch it because it was PG-13 and we were 13. So we go to the freaking, uh, what do you call it? The concession box to buy uh, two tickets to The Specialist because obviously we wanted to see some naked, well, my friend wanted to see naked Sharon Stone. I wanted to see naked Sylvester Stallone. And we get to the freaking concession and they're like, no. And I'm like, well, it says PG-13. He's like, no. It's like he knew what we were up to. <laughs> so we ended up getting tickets to Forrest Gump. We're so disappointed. Instead of freaking sex and nudity in action, we got Life is Like a Box of Chocolates. But I mean, it was a good movie anyway. But yes, because of, because of that, I was like traumatized. I was like, I'm not sneaking into a theater anymore. I can't. But uh, yeah, so we I watched Set It Off when it came on to VHS like later in the year. So good, one of the best. Uh, I just remember loving the movie, relating to the characters in terms of like their emotion. And uh, it was just an awesome action packed movie. I was just always into like those urban movies, you know, like Set It Off, Soul Food, Booty Call, Deliver Us from Eva, Dead Presidents, Boys in the Hood, Menace to Society. Even movies like um, that uh, Blood In, Blood Out. I love those movies when I was growing up. I know, so not me, but but me. 
because I mean I love the TV shows like Fresh Prince and Martin so you know I was really gravitating toward the movies anywho set it off was amazing I love that movie so much actually I want to rewatch it again I actually have it on DVD and Blu-ray so uh, so she wasn't set it off that was in 96 and then what else was she in she was in Booty Call I remember renting that movie and not understanding it I don't know though maybe I need to rewatch it again because I mean it was a hit and then I remember watching, what else was she in? She was in, two can play that game again, probably in my top 20 movies of all time. I remember seeing that as an late teen. And I remember, I didn't see it in theaters because we didn't, I mean, Winnipeg sucks in terms of movies that star, like have a main star as a, like a black actor or actress or a black themed movie. And we, like our city wouldn't play it. It was very rare. So I remember I caught that on, on DVD and loved it. Morris Chestnut, fun AF. And I remember Gabrielle Union in that movie. I loved her in that movie. But, and of course she did Kill Bill. Anyway, Vivica A. Fox did so many. Oh, and of course she did Independence Day. Love that movie too. Anyhow, I remember another like black themed movie was, um, I'm using that because I don't know how else to freaking describe it. But the, uh, What's that movie that I loved? I actually saw this in theater. And <laughs> I dragged my friend with me. And she's like, I don't want to see it. I'm like, well, I want to see it. You know? This was 98. So I was like, we go see this movie together. I'll go see Enemy of the State with you next weekend, which was Will Smith. But uh, Angela Bassett. What's the movie? How Stella Got Her Groove Back. Loved that movie too. Loved it. Also the soundtrack. I think I bought the soundtrack because it had that song, Mr. Lover, Mr. Lover. Ooh, boy, I love you so. I'm never, ooh, that was off key. Ooh, boy, I love you so. I'm never, ever, ever gonna let you go. Once I get my hands on you. Love me, love me, love me, sex machine. Bought the CD because of that. The whole soundtrack spent freaking $17 just for that one song from Shaggy and Janet. And what else? Okay, well, speaking of, I've been kind of binge watching Black Summer. I remember watching it when it came out back in 2020, 2021, but I don't remember a lot of it. So a lot of it is new to me. So I'm actually almost done the season. There's only two seasons, unfortunately. A lot of just, is. I think Stephen King gave it a positive review, but way better than Walking Dead past the fifth season. Walking Dead was good, like seasons one, two, three, four, five. I think I stopped watching after season 10, so I don't even know what happens anymore. But season one of Black Summer, amazing. Season two of Black Summer, even better. Love, 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 love it. Uh, so I've, I'm finishing season two of Black Summer. I think I'm on episode like five. There's only eight, eight episodes, I think. I'm just struggling to find things to watch, even though there's like so many things to watch that can keep my attention. Because I get just sick of stuff so easily. I actually get sick of people easily too. I feel like that's why... I, I, I mean, honestly, I'm in a space in my life where I actually don't even want a boyfriend. Or I don't even know if I want a husband. Like, I'm just so particular in my ways that I just don't want to be infiltrated by somebody and have to deal with their own shit, you know? He likes it this way. He wants to do this. He prefers this. He does this. Why? Why does that have to affect my life? And I don't want it to affect my life, you know? Like, what if I have a boy? Well, I have a husband. I come home, and he's there come from work, and the kids are there, and I'm left to make breakfast. Dinner? Okay, and then we sit around and watch TV. <laughs> Boring. No, thank you. I don't want that kind of mediocrity. I feel like I should just be single and like switch out boyfriends every like two years. So I'll have a boyfriend like every, and this is when I'm skinny and hot. I have a boyfriend and I'll sign a contract with him and be like, look, we have a two year contract of being in a relationship and then we're gonna end it and I'm gonna upgrade you to a different model. <laughs> I mean, I've been in love. I don't like it. It puts, it, it gives you, it puts you in a vulnerable situation. Trust me. I know. So I feel like just not loving someone, just maybe being with someone. Like I said, like a little two year contract deal. I 
I just like I'm just old. I just don't want to be bothered by people's shit. You know, I don't have to. I don't want to be bothered with people's idiosyncrasies, people's particularisms, people's mannerisms, people's attitude and behavior. I don't want to be required to give more than I want to. You know, and at this point, I really just want to give to me, my mom, and my dog. I know that's all. And the two friends that I have left. <laughs> and even then, that's minimal. <sighs> anyway, Daniel's freaking out, so you better go get him. He's like literally over there. Hey guys, Miss Philly in the house. What's up? <laughs> we are coming from the Pembina Valley Village. Whew, we ran into a few people there. We ran into someone who watches the videos from Winnipeg, Jason. He was super nice, like super nice. And, um, yeah, he was super nice. <laughs> we, so it was really nice meeting you, Jason. Um, hopefully you get some amazing things at the thrift store. And then we saw Fraggle Rock and Rhubarb. Always nice chatting with them. I love them. They're so, so nice and I, great people. <sighs> okay. So we on thrifting. <laughs> we got a few things that I want to share with you guys. Nothing like crazy, but... We got this because it was only $6.50. This looks like it's from the 70s, just based on the tag inside. Could be 80s, but it's real Sherpa. And I believe the exterior is Nubuck. I'm pretty sure that's Nubuck leather. Let me know. I know someone will, will let me know. But it's like an aviator style. I mean, this would keep anyone's head warm. <laughs> I look like the Unabomber. Ugh, if you're not a 90s adult or teen, then you wouldn't know who the Unabomber was. Okay, we got that. And, and then we picked up a few vintage perfumes because, you know, yo girl has had so much luck with vintage perfumes. So we picked up a few. These seem to sell well on oops, eBay. That's where we usually post our vintage perfumes. So we have our, okay. So this one was like $6 less, $2 off, Stephen B. It, uh, I've never heard of this brand, but it is Intensified Cologne. Uh, what does that say? I can't make it out. Toronto, Canada. Anyway. Stephen B. This seems to sell for about fifty to seventy dollars on eBay. Smells like an old lady <laughs> from the eighties. This one seems to sell for about thirty. We paid four. So this is a half bottle of bluegrass flower mist eau de cologne by Elizabeth Arden, and this smells like old lady as well, but not rancid. So this is bluegrass. I guess this is older because look at her bottle. Literally looks like Chanel bottles, engraved, no sticker. So this has to be like 90s or 80s. And then the last thing we got was this, a Michael Kors bag for $17. Somewhere on the handle, but overall the structure structure is intact. Drummed leather, Michael Kors, and minimal corner wear. We'll probably get like $50 for this. So the handles have wear on the glazing. We'll clean all that up. And the interior looks like that. So, anywho, that's all that we got so far. And Daniel's back to interrupt us because he got no life. He got no life but me.